Usually if I'm gonna play an RPG that isn't Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, I'm gonna pick something pretty different. Something like Fiasco or Tales from the Loop. But lately I've been asking a lot of people about their favorite RPGs that scratch the same itch as D&D. Or to put it a bit differently, if D&D 5e were to just magically disappear overnight, what would be my top contenders to replace it? Now before we get to that list of games, I do want to give two quick thank yous. Firstly, I want to thank the handful of you who responded to my questions about alternatives to D&D, both on Twitter and on the weekly patron stream a few weeks back. Your input was valuable and I appreciate it. Secondly, I want to thank Hero Forge for sponsoring this video. We'll hear more about them in just a little bit. Now the following list of eight games in alphabetical order, plus a few honorable mention, are the likeliest contenders to replace D&D in my life. Moving away from D&D 5e is not something I have any immediate plans to do, but it is something I think about quite often, and you never know, it could happen. As we start, know that I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the games I mention and any that you feel I should have mentioned in this video. Just leave those down in the comments below. All right, let's begin. First on our list, we've got 13th Age, written by a couple of former D&D writers, Rob Heinsu and Jonathan Tweet. This one is a d20 rollover system, like most of the systems we'll be talking about here, where you're trying to meet or exceed a target number on the roll of a 20-sided die. 13th Age has a heavy narrative focus in a number of ways. It's got a very detailed background system, and the world, which is really well fleshed out, has icons. I think there's 13 of them, and they're basically these powerful rulers or patrons, and your PCs can have connections to those icons, whether positive or negative. Now, because there's some mechanics built into the system, this system might not be ideal if you're wanting to run your own setting. But I did get the chance to play it once a few years back, and I had a lot of fun with it. It moves pretty quickly and is a little more rules light than most of the editions of D&D, I would say. Rather than having grids, it's got different different zones of combat, engaged, nearby, and far away. I also really like the Escalation die, which in the second round of combat, the Game Master will put on a 1, a 6-sided die, and then slowly turn it up to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, successively in each round of combat, and the players get to add that number to their bonus when attacking so that they're more likely to hit later in rounds of combat. It's a pretty cool mechanic and does a lot of neat things. Next up, basic fantasy role-playing game. This one is in its third edition, which came out in, I believe, 2014. And this one is kind of a mashup of a lot of old-school D&D mechanics, along with a few new, more modern updates. And uh, it's really good. And here's the thing, guys. It's totally free. You can go download the free PDF right now. And the book here I got for less than $6 on Amazon. This one is mainly written by Chris Gonnerman with a number of other contributors, and it's basically like an open source fantasy role playing game heavily inspired by old school D&D. The fact that it's so inexpensive is really cool, and I've actually been pretty impressed by it as I've been reading through. It went from a, I guess I should probably put this on the list sort of game to actually a pretty strong contender. I'm really liking what I see here and that price. Think about this. For the price of one D&D player's handbook, you could buy this book for you and four or five members of your gaming group. So Basic Fantasy, a really well-loved game. A lot of people enjoy it. Check it out. Next up, characters are at the heart of any good role-playing game experience, and there is no better tool for bringing your character to life than Hero Forge, my sponsor for this video. Hero Forge is a free online character creator that runs in your browser and gives you access to thousands of items and parts, many different species, clothing, weapons, etc. It's all in full 3D and full color. Once you've realized your vision for your character, you can actually purchase miniatures of the character you just created in a variety of materials for use in your game. Head over to HeroForge.com right now and get building or click the link down in the video description. Also, check back frequently because they are adding new stuff every single week. Next on the list, we've got Dungeon Crawl Classics from Goodman Games. This one is a massive book, but um, it's actually not a super rules-heavy system. It's another kind of mashup of a lot of old school D&D ideas, heavily inspired by Appendix N, which is a section of the original D&D Dungeon Master's Guide that included a list of inspirational reading for game masters. 
taking those thematic elements Goodman Games has created just kind of a zany, gonzo brand of fantasy with all kinds of crazy stuff going on. We'll just say the adventures are very, very imaginative. I did find the book a bit hard to wade through, and I feel like playing the game would have me flipping around between various tables pretty often. Still, there is a payoff, as there's some really great stuff in here that can enhance your game. Things like critical hit tables and differing spell results based on how high you roll. One interesting element of Dungeon Crawl Classics is something I got to experience at Gen Con a few years back. And by the way, the DCC room was hopping. That place was always busy, full of people. But on this funnel experience, we all had four characters, each one on a little note card, and they were commoners, level zero characters with hardly any stats really developed. And as you might expect, a lot of them died, and only the ones that did make it through the adventure could become real adventurers. So it's kind of a fun concept, but overall there is a high level of lethality in Dungeon Crawl Classics. Anyway, Dungeon Crawl Classics is one I've really enjoyed. I'm glad I have it in my library and hope to play more in the future. Next on the list, we've got Fantasy Age by Chris Premis. Now this is published by Green Ronin Publishing, which is the same publishing house that made the Dragon Age RPG, and Fantasy Age is very much using the same DNA as the Dragon Age RPG did. AGE actually stands for Adventure Game Engine, so the Dragon Age RPG came first, and then this system makes it more generic for any fantasy setting. This is the first game on the list that doesn't use a d20 as its main die. It's actually a 3d6 system where you're rolling three six-sided dice and trying to beat the target. Now, one of those dice should be a different color, and that acts as the stunt die. When you roll doubles on any of the three dice you're rolling, you get to stunt, and you actually get a number of stunt points equal to the numeral on the stunt die. These allow you to do really cool extra moves in combat and even sometimes in role playing or exploration. Overall, the Fantasy Age system is one I haven't had a chance to play, but it is really attractive to me and is a high contender for replacing D&D 5e, although I should probably play it before I make that call. It definitely seems faster and a bit more rules light than D&D 5th edition, but uh, it's still robust enough that I could see myself playing a campaign in Fantasy Age and having a lot of fun. Next on the list, we've got Forbidden Lands from Free League. So this is a Swedish role-playing game, and it definitely has some old-school sensibilities while still deviating quite a bit from the mechanics of those d20 rollover systems. This one's very unique in that it uses a dice pool system where you're going to be rolling a number of six-sided dice, and any sixes mean you succeed. If that sounds familiar, it's basically the Mutant Year Zero system that a ton of the Free League games do use. And I really like that system. It's like taking, you know, Mutant Year Zero or Tales from the Loop, but giving it more of a fantasy spin, including a lot of new rules that emphasize combat, uh, strongholds, survival is a big part of this game as well. I love that there's a ton of variety in the actions that players can take in combat, and if you look at the monster stat blocks, there's a ton of different actions monsters can take. So it's definitely got an old school vibe, and one of the ways it does is because it seems really deadly, and combat in general should be avoided. If you're going into a fair fight, you're doing it wrong. As always, Free League's layout, production value, and art are just second to none. I really love these books. I still haven't gotten a chance to play Forbidden Lands, so if you have played it, I would really love to hear from you down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it. Next on the list, Index Card RPG Master Edition. Now, I did a review of First Edition, and I'll put a link to that right up there, but there have been quite a few changes over the last few years since then. There was a Second Edition, and now Master Edition. Master Edition is a pretty big book. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of four to 500 pages. I only have the PDF at this time, but I've got the hard copy on its way to my house as we speak, actually. It's published by Runehammer Games, and it does use a D20 rollover system, but it is much more rules light than any of the games we talked about so far. Really simplified, really big emphasis on speed, and a lot of GM philosophy and kind of big picture concepts to help GMs be equipped to fill in where the rules might not cover things. So it's a pretty big book, but a lot of it is GM tools, not rules. There's actually about 150 pages of just setting information on five different settings for index card RPG. A couple of the concepts that stick out to me are clockwise initiative, countdown timers, 
Uh, lots of great loot tables, great encounter advice. The game is just immensely hackable and that mindset is really encouraged for the game master to become a game designer and just kind of mash things together and create their own rules to support things they want to do. Next up, Ironsworn. This game was independently published by Sean Tompkin and it is completely free, just like Basic Fantasy. You can go get the free PDF right now. Hard copies of the book are fairly inexpensive as well and there are a number of other books that they do sell. So being free definitely makes it stand out, but another thing that makes this game stand out is that it has GM-less play, where you can actually play with a group without having a game master, and it has a mode for solo play. In addition, it does have a traditional play method with a game master and players, and from what I hear, all of them are quite good, though I haven't gotten a chance to play this one yet. The game has a really clean, modern design, and it uses mostly stock art that Sean seemed to have reworked in Photoshop, this system is based on Powered by the Apocalypse, first popularized in the game Apocalypse World, so that's sort of a game engine that this system uses to some extent. It differs in this way, instead of rolling 2d6 and trying to get a certain number, you're actually rolling 2d10 and then rolling a six-sided die as well. The goal is to have your six-sided die roll plus any relevant bonuses higher than at least one of the ten-sided dice or the challenge dice. Like other Powered by the Apocalypse game, you have a number of moves to choose from. And overall, I would describe this playing pretty differently from D&D in terms of the mechanics and dice. But you can still play out your epic fantasy adventures in the same style that you can in pretty much any of these games. The last game on the core list, before we get to a couple of honorable mention, is... Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Now, I've only played a little bit of 2nd Edition, but I did really enjoy it. Pathfinder, more than any other, is going to be a more complex rule system. All the other ones on this list are generally going to be as simple or simpler than D&D 5e. Uh, this one, I would say, that is not the case. It's got a more robust rule system that does attract a lot of people, and you're going to get more variety in terms of character options as well, both at the outset and character creation, and also, as you progress further, just being able to select more little paths and specializations and feats and things like that to really make a unique character. So Pathfinder has a really big following. They have really great adventure paths. And I would say more than any other game on this list, it's kind of like another edition of D&D, just because Pathfinder started as basically D&D 3.75. When D&D moved on to 4th edition, a lot of people felt burned, and Pathfinder kind of carried the torch in terms of people who really wanted to stick with D&D 3.5. So anyway, Pathfinder is probably the biggest publisher on the list here, and uh, they're going to have a lot of products available for you. Adventure Paths, which are generally pretty well received, as well as lots of other supplements that introduce new options and rules. So those are the top contenders for me, the games that most kind of tempt me away from D&D 5th edition. But I do want to give a couple of honorable mention shout outs to a couple other games. Warhammer Fantasy is the first one. If you like dark, gritty, I think the, uh, the tagline is grim and perilous, uh, then you're probably going to like Warhammer Fantasy. So check that one out. Another one is Shadow of the Demon Lord, also very dark and gritty. This one is kind of an end times apocalypse world with demons, but still fantasy. A lot of you mentioned this one and it seems to be very well loved. There's Dungeon World, which is a 2013 powered by the apocalypse fantasy game. I don't know much about it, but I hear good things. Easy D6 is an interesting one that was just released. I actually picked up the PDF, but haven't dug in yet, but it's by DM Scotty. Seems like a super rules light system that can get really crazy really quick. Now, in terms of some games that might fit the bill for old school renaissance, I would mention Castles and Crusades. Don't know much about it, but I hear good things. Nave by Ben Milton of Questing Beast, one I've been meaning to check out. And I'll also give a shout out to The Black Hack, which is another OSR style game, but definitely a little different in that it's a D20 roll under system. So you're actually trying to roll under a target number. Uh, still, Nave and Black Hack are two that are like, they're super thin books, really rules light, very uh, hackable and easy to combine with other OSR style games. All right, what do you think? Are there ones that I should have mentioned here? Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And before we go, I do want to thank the WASD20 patrons for their support. Patrons help make these videos happen. I couldn't do it without them. So thank you so much, patrons. They also get access to some cool rewards, things like weekly live map drawing streams with me, 
So check it all out over at patreon.com slash WASD20. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, make sure you're subscribed, and everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.